So I got a message from a viewer. They said, yo, Kevin, you're always telling us don't pursue medical school, don't pursue becoming a doctor if you just want money. And they said, what if I do just want that sweet, sweet Skrilla? What profession is gonna give me more money with less effort and less time? You've got questions, I've got answers. Stay tuned. What's going on, guys? For those of you who are new here, my name is Kevin Jabal. Now, anyone can go on Google and search for the top highest paid professions, but you care about more than that. We're gonna go a layer deeper. I'm gonna say there are five different things you wanna keep in mind when looking at a profession. This video is sponsored by Doc2Doc, Doc, the personal lending platform designed for doctors by doctors. Visit doctordoclending.com to learn more today. So number one is obviously income potential. How much money can you expect to make in that profession? And we're looking beyond the average because the average doesn't actually tell you that much. We're also considering the variance. So certain professions have a narrower range of low to high and some have a broader range of their low to high numbers. Some professions also have a glass ceiling, meaning that it's harder to actually break past a certain number and then others have an unlimited earning potential. Number two, we're gonna look at probability, meaning the probability of either getting into that profession or earning that desired level of income. Number three is opportunity cost. The most obvious example of this is the time and money you spend becoming a doctor. It takes a lot of time, four years of med school, three to seven years of residency, as well as lots of money and tuition, lots of debt that you have to accrue to get to that point before you start earning the big bucks. Number four is lifestyle. And I get it, when you're a broke, struggling student, finances are pretty high on your list because you wanna escape that financial pain, that financial strain. But once you get past that into a point of financial security with your career, then optimizing further for finances isn't really a good use of your energy. You probably care more about lifestyle. How are you spending your time both inside and outside of work? What's your stress level, your free time, things like that. You may even spend a lot of money to buy time back at that point. And then number five is, do you find the work meaningful and enjoyable? And this may actually be the most important factor that we don't discuss enough. The average person will spend over 90,000 hours working in their lifetime. That's close to one third of their life. All right, so let's break it down by profession. First up is physician and the income potential it's gonna depend on your specialty, but the average primary care physician earns on average $242,000 per year, and the average specialist earns on average $344,000 per year. Of note, this is active income, right? You need to exchange your time, your work for money. There's not as much potential for passive income until you become a business owner, you're owning your practice, things like that. Also of note, there tends to be a narrower range, lower variance in terms of the income. You're gonna have 200K to 300K in a given specialty, more or less, rather than going from 50K to 900K. And there is somewhat of a glass ceiling because again, you're exchanging your time for money, unless again, you become a business owner of sorts, but then now you're delving into the whole realm of entrepreneurship entrepreneurship and most physicians, especially in recent years, are shying away from private practice. All right, as for probability, definitely higher risk of getting into the profession. So first of all, getting into medical school, there is a lot of uncertainty there. About 38 to 40% of applicants in the US get into a US medical school. But then there's also a lot of uncertainty going from med school to residency. And a lot of people will tell you on these financial subreddits or forums or whatnot that choose your specialty wisely. And they may say, yeah, just like become a dermatologist, just become a plastic surgeon, like, that, there's your answer. But it's really, really, really hard to get into certain specialties. And you may be thinking, well, 70, 75% of applicants match into derm or plastics or ortho or neurosurge, but it's actually very self-selecting. So it's very misleading because you're competing against already very competitive applicants and you're not even going to apply to these specialties because of the way that the residency matching and application process works, unless you actually have a realistic chance of getting in. So getting into derm or plastics is way harder than getting into med school. However, on the other hand, being a physician as a profession is very low risk in certain ways, in the sense that if you put in the time and the effort and you work hard for X number of years, then you are gonna have a very secure profession that's always gonna be in demand and you're gonna make a good sizable income. It's good for those people who tend to be more risk averse. They're willing to just put their head down, grind, and just wait it out. Next up is opportunity cost, obviously very high. Not only is it four years of college, then four years of medical school, then three to seven years of residency, plus fellowship, which is optional. And that's a lot of time, right? Where you're not making a lot of money, but you also need to pay for medical school. You need to pay for college. And the average medical student graduates with over $200,000 in debt. And then the issue there is that when you're in residency, you're making like 50K. So you can't really even put a dent in your student loans such that they're now accruing interest and snowballing. Compound interest is working against you. So now that 200K, 
you're gonna end up paying more like 300 plus. Okay, as for lifestyle, this is super dependent on the actual specialty. And I have a whole series on the Med School Insider channel called So You Wanna Be, where I dive into each specialty and talk about things like lifestyle. But that being said, most doctors work between 40 to 60 hours per week, the average being right around 51. But you also need to factor other things with lifestyle, such as your lifestyle during college, med school, residency, and fellowship, because as people say, those are the best years of your life and you're grinding hard. And lastly, is the work meaningful and enjoyable? I think the overwhelming majority of physicians would say absolutely because you're interacting one-on-one -on -one with a patient and you're, you're changing their life for the better, which is really satisfying. All right, next up is computer science and programmers. Income potential here, the average salary is $91,000, but you can make way more than that, like an order of magnitude more if you work at one of these larger tech companies, like the fan companies, right? Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. But that brings us to the second point, which is probability. You're more likely to make between 80 to low six figures per year. Getting into one of these super competitive fan companies is really, really challenging. They receive, I hear it's like 50,000 resumes per week and the acceptance rate is a fraction of a percent. I think the last time I heard it was 0.2% on average. But in terms of opportunity cost, being a programmer is actually pretty low. A lot of computer programmers are self-taught. They didn't complete a college degree in computer science and they didn't have to wait until 21 or 22 to start their job. They could start sooner than that. That being said, if you are starting off without a degree, you're gonna be on average at a lower income. But if you are a really gifted and hardworking programmer, even without a degree, you can work your way up. That being said, if you do wanna start off at a higher income, then having a degree is definitely gonna help. In terms of lifestyle, you're gonna have pretty standard 40 hour work weeks, nine to five hours, Monday through Friday, on average, but if you move up to these higher, more desirable positions, then you might be grinding a little bit harder, especially if you're in a more management position. And then also keep in mind with programming, you tend to spend a lot of time at a computer, right? Physician interacting with patients, you're in the operating room, you're doing surgery. With comp sci, you're spending a lot of time at the computer. And lastly, will you find the work enjoyable and meaningful? And the key thing here is that you're solving problems and those problems with computer code can scale at a near zero cost of replication, which is really powerful stuff. You can make massive changes in the world through the beauty and through the power of computer science. And of note, computer science actually has a higher than average job satisfaction rate. One survey, they reported that employees who majored in comp sci had a satisfaction rate of 67.7% compared to all majors at 60.5%. Next up is engineering, which we are separating out from computer science. And the average salary is $90,000, but starting salaries are usually around fifty-five dollars to $70,000, depending on the type of engineer you are, as well as where you are working. This includes biomedical, chemical, electrical, civil, and the like. But do note that the top 10% of earners are making close to $200,000 per year. Now, in terms of probability, most engineering positions are going to require a bachelor's degree, at least in engineering, and some will actually require a master's as well. Do note that engineering is widely considered to be a more challenging major in college, but it really depends on your skill set, right? Because engineering is not memorization heavy. So if you're like me and you don't like memorization, you may actually find it easier than something like psychology that does require more memorization. So engineering is much more conceptually heavy, math heavy. If you like that, then you may actually enjoy it. And also note that engineering occupations have an unemployment rate around 3%, which is substantially lower than most other professions. Opportunity cost with engineering is pretty low because again, after your four years of college, you can usually get a pretty good job. As far as lifestyle, most positions are salary. You can expect 40 hours per week. And it does vary a little bit. Like if you do have some tight project deadlines coming up, sure, you'll have a longer week here or there, but on average, pretty reasonable. And lastly, are you gonna find the work meaningful and enjoyable? So you won't be using math on a daily basis as much as you did in training, but you still will be needing to use math pretty frequently. So if you don't like math, you're probably not gonna find it enjoyable. The other cool thing with engineering is that there are so many different avenues and subtypes within engineering that you can find a niche that's good for you. One other interesting thing I found is that engineers on average take less interest in people compared to things, which makes sense because they're solving problems on a more thing level rather than a personal level, right? Physicians are working with people at the end of the day, whereas engineers are working on material things. Next up is lawyer, which in terms of income potential has a very high degree of variance. And it depends on the type of firm you're working at because a big versus small firm can have a huge disparity as well as the type of law that you're working in. Starting salary is usually around 60 to $80,000, but definitely well into the six figures if you're working at a big firm. But to give you an idea, the media Median is at $127,000 per year, and the highest 10% earn upwards of $200,000 per year. All right, probability. Now, this is highly dependent on the tier of law school that you're attending. 
In the last few years, 61 to 66% of applicants were accepted to law school. The top 10 law schools have a GPA of around 3.7 or higher, mid tiers around 3.4, and the lower end, you can even find something like 2.9 on average. And if you wanna see the competitiveness of law school versus med school and other graduate degrees, then check out this video here. In terms of the LSAT, matriculant score between the 63rd to 67th percent on average, and unemployment is at a very low 2.3% for lawyers. In terms of opportunity cost, this is kind of middle of the road. So you have your four years of undergrad, but then law school is an additional three years on top of that. The cost of law school is about $50,000 per year for private schools and thirty dollars to $40,000 per year for public schools. And that translates to an average of $120,000 in student loans when you graduate or $155,000 if you attend a top 10 law school. Okay, lifestyle, way different than what you've seen on TV. And don't get me wrong, I love suits just as much as the next guy. I like this. But there's a lot of time spent on the computer researching and reading and writing. Most lawyers do work pretty hard though. They're working 50 to 60 hours per week on average. And then depending on the type of law you practice, you may be juggling a lot of different cases, be on call, it can be stressful. Now, will you find the work meaningful and enjoyable? First of all, it's a pretty high stress job on average. So you need to be able to tolerate that or at least manage it in a healthy way. Is this a coffee cart guy? Yeah, help yourself. Don't mind if I do. There are also a lot of different paths you can take within law because just about every field needs lawyers in it. So you can subspecialize as such. Do keep in mind though, that having an analytical mind and good communication skills will be a strong asset if you do become a lawyer. Next up is finance. And in terms of income potential, there is a huge degree of variance here. The average starting salary is around $55,000 per year. And once you're in the industry for 10 plus years, the average salary is low six figures. But of course, compensation will vary based on your position, based on the field, based on your level of experience. So. As examples, a CFA makes on average $81,000 per year. Personal financial advisor averages $87,000 per year. Financial manager, $129,000 per year. Investing banking associate, $150,000 to $200,000 per year and a managing director, $400 to $600,000 per year. A lot of positions also have a commission or incentive-based structure. So based on your performance, you can get a lot of bonuses. So that managing director that's making 400 to 600 K as a base salary can then earn seven figures with all their bonuses. In terms of probability, it is considered to first get your foot in the door to get into the profession. But once you're in, there's a lot of demand and unemployment rates are fairly low. Depending on what kind of finance degree and training you have, there's a lot of flexibility. You can go into various different avenues depending on what interests you. In terms of opportunity cost, you're looking at primarily just a bachelor's degree, so on the lower end of things. But in terms of lifestyle, it's usually considered pretty rigorous, especially early on. Like no one is jealous of an investment banker's lifestyle. All right, now, will you find the work meaningful and enjoyable? So first off, keep in mind that it is higher stress on average, especially when you get to those higher salary positions. Finance does obviously teach you a lot about managing money, which is why it's one of the career areas that mint a lot of millionaires because you understand the basics of investing, compound interest, you know, uh, saving more than you spend, things like that. Finally is entrepreneur, my favorite category. In terms of income potential, the average entrepreneur in 2021 earned $71,000 per year. But entrepreneurship has the widest variance in terms of income potential and a theoretically unlimited ceiling, unlimited potential. All right, probability. Now, a lot of people like to throw out these very doomsday numbers in terms of entrepreneurship, but according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, 20% of new businesses fail during the first two years, 45% during the first five years, and 65% during the first 10 years only 25% of new businesses make it to 15 years or more. Now, the numbers paint a pretty dismal picture, but I think they're deflated, right? They, they look worse than they actually are because there's no barrier to entry. Anyone can call themselves an entrepreneur no matter how good or bad their idea is. Because of that, a lot of people are approaching their small business in a very suboptimal way that increases the risk of failure. But if you are intelligent, strategic, hardworking, and you do things in the right way, I do believe that entrepreneurship isn't as risky as most people think. So my two main businesses, for example, Med School Insiders and Mem, were are both profitable nearly instantly. And I mean, they're no eight, nine figure unicorn companies by any means. But I knew getting into it that they would be pretty safe. Now, in terms of opportunity cost, it's super variable. A lot of people will get a four year degree. Is it necessary? Absolutely not. A lot of people think you need an MBA to be an entrepreneur. I don't think so. I think an MBA, especially in modern day, is more about networking. And there is a lot of value to having a strong network if you go to a good, a good program. But at the end of the day, you're gonna learn way more about entrepreneurship by doing entrepreneurship. In terms of lifestyle, it's actually very common to work 60 plus hours, especially at the beginning, until you can hire people and then delegate out those tasks and then save some time for yourself. As an example, when I first quit the whole resident surgeon thing, I was working 90 to 100 hours 
hours per week for several months building my businesses. But I was also having a lot of fun doing it. It was a really exciting time of growth. On the other side, the lifestyle is really challenging because as a business owner, you're never truly off. And there are many times when like I'm on vacation, I'm on a trip and then I get an urgent call. I need to put out some fire and, and drop everything to handle it. So a lot of people do prefer being an employee where you can just clock in, clock out and forget about things. Most entrepreneurs can't do that, especially not at the beginning. But then the flip side of that is that you have way more flexibility and control. You work for yourself. You control how you work, where you work from, how long you work, all those factors. You make the decision, you're the boss. But again, it comes at the cost of more stress, more responsibility, more liability, more things to worry about. And then finally, will you find the work meaningful and enjoyable? Well, first of all, it's your business, so you get to decide what it is you're working on. If you're working on something that you don't actually find meaningful and enjoyable, you're probably not gonna be willing to work on it for a long enough period of time to actually see it to fruition and, and have it be successful. I've been working on Medical Insiders for like five years, and that's because I care about it. I'm passionate about helping pre-meds, helping med students, because I went through that process. I see a lot of pain, I see a lot of suboptimal, nonsense out there, like bad advice that's harming people, I wanted to fix that. So I derive meaning and that's given me the longevity to keep pushing on with Med School Insiders. I think a lot of entrepreneurs also tend to be bad employees in that they, maybe not bad employees, but they don't like being told what to do or, or they don't like being told to do things in a certain way because, oh, I just done that way. Even though it doesn't really make sense, it's like some bureaucratic, weird kind of nonsensical waste of time, inefficient kind of manner. Like I remember even when I was in high school, I worked as a library aide and they had certain policies that didn't make sense to me. And I, I followed it, but I was kind of like, oh God, this, is, this is so dumb. I wasn't happy about it. Maybe I forgot some professions. If you think there are some better options, let us all know with a comment down below. Hope you found that video helpful. Much love, and I'll see you guys in that next one. Time to make it rain, bitches.